The third thing that God hates is hands that shed innocent blood. And Obama has been weighed in the balance and found wanting on that also. Obama supports abortion on demand, partial birth abortion. Barack Obama is the King Herod of the 21st century. Barack Obama cast his vote against the Born Alive Infant Protection Act. Let me explain this act. It is to protect the life of a child who refused to be murdered by an abortionist and arrives breathing God's free air and clinging to life and is denied the care that we give to stray dogs and cats. There's something wrong with that. Someone always asks me, do you have your baby with you? I carry it around with me all the time. Because as you look at this little facsimile of a baby, this was you inside your mother at 11 weeks. And at 18 weeks, your heart was beating. God is going to judge this nation if we do not stop. And we elected a man who supports killing babies. We elected a man who supports homosexuals. It was Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. <laughs> Barack Obama cast his vote against the Board of Live Infant Protection Act. Don't expect them to put me on any of the local news medias or whatever, because they don't want a black conservative, they don't want a veteran who put in 21 years, 11 months, and 13 days talking about he loves America, especially if he's black. They want the Jesse Jackson syndrome or the Al Sharpton, all these other rascals who never put a day in the service. Never took the oath. Don't care nothing about the country. Millions of dollars in their bank account. I'm going to tell you something. Change is needed in America. We need to get on our knees and ask Almighty God to forgive us for voting such a devil into the house. Change is needed in America. But the change proposed by Barack Obama is an abomination and a stench in the nostrils of Almighty God. John 3.16 is a global message. And believe it or not, this 75-year-old preacher thought I was going to Fort Bragg to get a physical and retire. The Lord had other plans. First, he moved in a very pretty lady next door with her husband and we got to talking and she said to me, I want you to meet my mama. And that pretty lady is sitting right there. <laughs> on, the, on, on Christmas Day, I asked her 90-year-old father for her hand in marriage. <laughs> And her father said to me, you've made my day. <laughs> and on January the 11th of this year, we were married. Stand up, baby. That's one of the sweetest ladies you ever want to meet. I pray to the Lord for him to send somebody to me that would love me, not for what I have, but for just love me. And God sent that lady to me. And she has a beautiful family. I mean, it was green light all the way. You know, you look for something to go wrong. Nothing went wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is on this road. And if you're a young man out here, an old man, and you're looking for a wife, let me tell you how to do it. Ask God to send you one. And he will. And the same thing goes for a woman who's looking for a husband. You won't find him in the singles bar. We're having a lot of problems in our country, and it all stems back to the words that Jesus Christ said to a Pharisee one night. I thank God that I don't have to say this at night. I can say this in broad daylight. 
because John 3.16 is a universal message, not only for the United States of America, but for the entire world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And I asked the Lord Jesus Christ in 1968 to save my soul thanks to uh, Thomas Jones out of Spring Lake, and I found out it was real. And when I went home, I was getting ready to go to Vietnam the next year, and my mother did not believe it. In fact, she said, he's just acting like this now because he's going to Vietnam. And when he comes back from Vietnam, he'll be drinking like the rest of us. Well, I haven't had a drink in 42 years, and I thank God for that. Nothing to brag about. But I prayed for my mother for 17 years. And on the 17th year, my mother said to me, I accept Christ. I accept Christ as my Savior. And I baptized my mother. And I was crying like a baby. So I know what this is about. The John 3.16 message is for Africa, Asia, Antarctica, Australia, Europe, North America, South America. I gave one of my cards to a, a Muslim the other day. And he said, well, I'm a Muslim. And I said, well, Christ died for you. And when I gave him the gospel, I felt the Holy Spirit hit him. So he knew. And all over the world, people are accepting Jesus Christ. During the time of Christ, it was a black Ethiopian eunuch reading the book of Isaiah. And he said, who are they talking about? And Philip joined the chariot and gave him the gospel. And this man said, there's water. What must hinder me from being baptized? And Peter says, I mean, uh, Philip said, well, you can if you believe. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I don't care what your sins are out there. God does not care about that. He says, though your sins be as scarlet. I'll make them white as snow. All I ask you to do is come to me. He didn't ask you to climb no hoops. He didn't tell you that he was going to set all kind of money down as these TV preachers are trying to tell people. They're buying Cadillacs and Mercedes and all this kind of garbage instead of telling the, the world that God so loved them that he gave his only begotten son and Jesus Christ died and he rose from the dead. We celebrate it every year. And if you're a Muslim and you don't like that, pack your bags and go back to Mecca. <laughs> when you came to this country, whoever you are, you came here knowing that we are a nation that worship Jesus Christ. We have no apology about that. You can go all over Washington, D.C. and see the Ten Commandments. When we went into court, and I used to be a deputy sheriff, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you who? God. So help you God. You die right. And every time there's a tragedy, we always hear these a public officials saying, oh, let's pray. Well, you should be praying before there's a tragedy. If Bill Clinton would have been praying in the White House, Monica Lewinsky would still have her reputation. <laughs> You know, I said one thing when I was in Washington a couple weeks ago. I had my, my bullhorn, and I was facing the Capitol, and they had the Tea Party up there, and I was on the back. And I said, President Barack Obama, God is still on his throne. President Nancy Pelosi, God is still on his throne. Harry Reid. God is still on his throne. Now we have black leaders today. We don't see too many of them here today. But it is, it is a, a hot place in hell for black leaders from Obama on down who support the killing of innocent pre-born children, 1,600 black babies every single day. And they say they're for civil rights. If they're for civil rights, then I am for ants taking over the White House. 